Hi everybody, welcome back. So last time we took a look at how to open up Prism and attach audio units. Let's take a quick moment to take a look at the layout and how everything's configured. So when you open up Prism, you're gonna see the main page for the track you're on. There are 16 tracks, each track is identical and the only difference changes depending on whether you set it up as a tonal or a drum track. Once you have a track open, the screen is primarily divided into three parts. To the left, we have the various states that allow us to transform the MIDI signal from sequence to ultimate output, represented in the rough, you know, linear version from down to up of the MIDI chain. So it goes sequence, fuse. If we were in a tonal track, we'd see the ARP, Q, and then up. Below, we have the 8x2 matrix that is our sequencer. We can use this to add and remove sequence trigs. It'll change in various states to give better functionality depending on what's happening. Um, you can always use press and hold the settings menu and use the help mode to get a description of what state the sequence tricks are in and what they're actively doing. Finally, to the right, we have the keypad or the multi keypad. The keypad is composed of four different states that help you impact and change the various configurations of wherever your sequence is at. So the keypad will change depending on if you're in the sequence, the fuse, the hue mode, and there's a few other states that will the keypad will adapt to offer the right functionality as you need um, to create a nice experience. Uh, so the keypad is made of four modes. The lowest or the bottom one is the transformation in the settings mode, giving you options to transform. Right now we're in the sequence. Um, so we can quantize, we can follow, we can shift the notes left and right. But depending on where you are, this will always change. So Fuse has different ones, Hue has different ones. Track Select has its own settings. Um, so think about what state of the device am I in, and then you can go to transformation to get the applicable settings for that state. Moving on, we have the keypad mode. This generally consists of the primary functionality that's specific to the, um, the engine or the state that we're in, so sequence views, etc. Um, right now we're just playing notes, so this selects the drum pads and the notes. Um, moving on, we have the loop button. This gives us access to Prism's looper, which allows us to select any range of bars to play back, um, as well as up here in the right, the MIDI slicer. There'll be more videos on the looper and the slicer later. Moving up, we have the pattern and scene menu. The top eight keys allow us to access the eight global scenes that help us compose the various parts of our songs, and the lower eight keypads represent the eight patterns that every track has available to it. Certain um, functions and engines like the harmonizer and the hues have their own patterns associated to them. And you can see that by the changing of the pattern coloring to match hues instead of the red track color. Um, within the track, the main other main things to look at, we've got our top bar. We have play, stop, record. We have these screen capture, screen load, snapshot load, sorry, and settings buttons. You have a mute, a paste, and a copy. I'd recommend using the help menu by pressing and holding settings and pressing all of these to get a feel for what they can do. They all have press and long press functionality, giving them a lot of versatility. Uh, the final thing I'd like to call out is the track select state. You can access this by pressing um, the track name down below the sequence or up here. This gives us access to the 16 tracks available. We can then use the tricks to select a track and press sequence, fuse, or track again to jump back into the main states for that track and keep working for it. But using these tools, this is how we can compose 16 tracks and use the loopers, the trans, sorry, the loopers, the settings, the fuse, our the patterns, the scenes, the harmonizers, the slicers, everything we need to pull it together into something that is really, really special and worth keeping until the end of our project, whether that be a song or an album. All right. Thanks for checking this out. Next time we'll actually get playing with the device and we'll see how the MIDI sequencer works.